welcome back to My Little Geekery's Adventures in Alterra. Uh, where we last, last left off, um, I was quite frankly getting a little peeved at a bit of a standard dungeon adventure that was didn't really i mean it the, the map was nice the actual adventure was nice but it didn't really have any pertinent information um within the adventure um as far as monsters and and traps and and things were concerned and it just it was very frustrating um so a bit of a change uh christmas has since happened and as a christmas present i got a glorious glorious little supplement book um uh, Eyes Unclouded, which is the um, Miyazaki uh, Studio Ghibli anime-based uh, series of adventures. Um, and you will also notice that my um, audio is a little bit different. That's because I also ordered just before Christmas a microphone set. So I'm almost feeling rather professional um, to start the new year off. Although uh, some things have happened, which is kind of why this is happening a little bit after a longer hiatus than I planned. But eh, what are you going to do? Um, you might also notice that there is a meowing cat in the background. Uh, yes, that um, is my cat Loki. Uh, <laughs> who is being rather mouthy tonight for some bizarre reason. Um, so I have, I have my book, Eyes Unclouded. I have chosen an adventure in it. I have not, uh, again, much like my other adventures, I have not read it through. I've just sort of scanned it to see if it might actually be useful and interesting. And what's really great about the adventures in Eyes Unclouded is that many of them don't really need, have any combat situations necessarily. So that is actually rather good for Luar. Um, yes, he is a ranger, but it, this is also um, solo adventuring, which means that it, combat may not necessarily be the best way to go with a lot of these things. So let's get started. Okay, um, this adventure um, from the Eyes Unclouded collection uh, is called Cinderling Herding uh, by Tin, 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 Tin K. Ballerman? Ballman? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not sure how to pronounce the name and I'm sure, I'm sure I'm butchering it. I am so, so very sorry if you wrote this adventure and, and I am absolutely butchering your name. I do not mean to do that. We are going to go with the idea that after, after a bit of a bit of a rest and well, what is what was quite frankly a, a bit of a, a bit of a letdown of an of an adventure. Um, Luer uh, de Oton is uh, riding home um, through the forest uh, back to back to the capital of his homeland. Um, before winter sets in, at least before it hard sets in, um, winter is, it, the, the nights are crisp, some snow occasionally starts to fall, um, and he is actually on his way home through the forest. In a clearing off the beaten path stands a long abandoned farm. The forest has started to reclaim this area. Young trees and shrubs stand where there was once vegetables and an overgrown stone wall that is all, all is all that is left of what would have been a paddock for livestock. Blair is going to just sort of carefully ride around and check things out. Uh, let's see. The farmhouse itself is in bad shape. The roof has collapsed. Its windows and doors are broken. The remains of the wooden frames are soggy and moldy. The walls are sagging. It is clear that this building is on the verge of collapse. There are old rings of campfires within those walls. Evidence that other travelers found shelter here. Okay. Well, it is... You know what, this, this would actually be a fine place to sort of set up for the night. So that is what I shall do. Um, I'm going to bring my horse inside, actually. I don't, 
The roof has already collapsed. It's kind of open a bit to the outdoors anyway, but at least it will provide some shelter against whatever cold winds will start to blow. So that's good enough. Um, uh, uh, let's see if I can actually kind of shore this up a little bit. Use, use some tree branches um, and remnants of whatever is lying around to make a survival check and try and try and make, make a better shelter out of out of what's here for the night survival oh well that is an ampersand of a crit so that will definitely not be a problem i will definitely be able to do that Let's see, while I am getting ready to for shelter for the night, let's see, let's see, um, let's make a perception check. Passive, passive perception is a 13. I'm not sure, well, I, in a natural setting, I also have advantage, but we're kind of... The forest is sort of reclaiming the building, so I don't know. I would I would say that it's I would say that it's a natural setting as the forest has sort of reclaimed this building. So I'm gonna have like an 18. Okay, let's see. I saw a little bit of movement out of the corner of my eye. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh. So I'm going to, I'm going to start poking around. Well, it's entirely possible that animals are living here because that, that sort of makes sense. Why wouldn't an animal shelter inside of a building for the winter? I mean, hmm, no, that's, that's much, much worse. I start poking around and whatever was here seems to have buggered off, which makes sense, you know. I am a ranger. I could be, I could be sort of misconstrued as a hunter. So yeah, that's, yeah, whatever, whatever animal was, was there was probably buggered off. So I will, I will light a fire for the night, pull out, pull out some food, start to cook. As I'm, well, I'm certainly not as, as good a cook as my chef. At least I, I know some, some, you know, basic pull out, put all, pull out my little pot and add some water and add some dried vegetables and rice and make a soup. Ah, after I have lit my fire, I make another perception check and I notice that some white eyes in the darkness sort of crawl out there's a little roll little, little round roll of of darkness that ha that's walking on spidery legs that just sort of walks up to me it sort of starts speaking to me with a high-pitched voice and in, in pantomime gestures okay um hmm what is oh i don't my performance, I can either make a charisma performance or an insight wisdom to interpret what this little creature is trying to say. I barely understand. It's, it's, it's just sort of squeaking and squawking and, and moving his, his strange little limbs in an attempt to get me to understand and it's, I, I, I'm having a difficulty understand it, but let's see, uh, they're called cinderlings and they live in fires and fireplaces. They're like little spirits. They've been living here for a long time. Um, they're rather happy that I'm here. They, 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 oh, oh, there's a lot of them. Okay. Um, let's see. 
uh, the house is falling apart and they're going to lose their home when it does so. Sort of the cinderling leader is named Bob. And Bob wants to know if I can help them find a new home. Well, I, I can certainly try. Uh, do, you, do, do you have a new home? I... Okay, yes, you do. Um, oh, oh if, if you require help, there's no need to offer me a reward. I will certainly do it for free. Uh, um, it, it, is, it is my duty to help to help anyone in distress with, with, within my kingdom. Uh, certainly, certainly I will help you. I, I, Luar reaches out with, with a little finger, a single finger, to sort of shake hands with the, with Bop. And, and suddenly Bop just sort of motions to come closer to the fireplace and to the chimney and a bunch more of the little cinderlings appear. Uh, they seem to be all smaller than Bob, and then they start to sort of crowd around me. And they also seem to be very interested in the meal that I am cooking. <laughs> well, okay, they're hungry. I, I'll start to pull out. I'll start to pull out some bread um, for the little... For, for the little uh, cinderlings, which apparently they sort of start gobbling up very quickly. Bop wants to leave as quickly as possible. Well, it, it's fairly late in the day and it, we're, and it's winter, so the sun will set very early. Um, let us, let us move out um, in the morning. Uh, let's see. The cinderlings don't need to pack anything. Um, if the adventurers arrived at the farm in the evening and intend to stay the night, the cinderlings will patiently wait until morning, watching over you as you sleep. Oh, that's lovely. They will dance around any fire, um, climb into the sleeping bags, and leave little ash prints on pillows. <laughs> Teeny tiny little black specks all over everything. That's... That's fine, whatever. Soot can just be brushed off of clothing. It's not that big of a deal. Okay. In the morning, um, it is time to help the cinderlings. They're not very large. I can just, why can't I just scoop them up into my backpack and carry you all along? And then when I start to do so... <clears throat> Lua realizes that the cinderlings are actually a lot heavier than they look. Let me, hmm, let me try to make a check to see if I can figure out. My history bonus is really, really good because I am a learned individual. Uh, okay, let me see if I can actually come up with these little soot spirits. Hmm. Not with a one. <laughs> I have, I have no idea that these little things are. I have, I have no idea. I have never encountered anything of resolve involving these little spirits before. I have no idea that they're fae, but they are. They're heavier than they look. They're like, they're like carrying little stones, even though they look like they're made out of fireplace soot. And a piece of charcoal weighs a lot less than a piece of wood of the same type, but it's it's really heavy like rock. And I thought that maybe I could actually just sort of scoop them up and put them in my backpack or even put them on the saddlebags of my horse, but that is that is not going to happen. I can carry some, my horse can carry some, but most of them are going to have to to travel themselves which apparently they're happy to do oh oh my dog <laughs> my, my dog sir Cougaro. um i can i can imagine a few of them riding on my dog too 
I will, I will, I will absolutely, I will use, I will use a spell, I will use a spell to speak with Animal and explain to Sir Kushiru what is happening here, that we will be taking these little, these little, uh, soot sprites to their new home, which is apparently further into the forest. There is, there's an old manor house that once stood and the forest has also reclaimed it but it's in much better shape apparently than than uh this house so we are going to take the soot sprites there at least that's i i guess that's what they said it's it's hard to make it there there even with my elfin ears i just it's very difficult to understand what they are saying. Okay, so that is what I will do. I will use a spell slot and I will speak to my dog so that my dog will understand. And he's just, he's just happy to be part of this because that's just the way dogs are. Dogs are just so happy to just be part of whatever it is that you're doing because dog. Um, although, because he's also a terrier, Sir Kujuru just also kind of wants to chase them because it's fun. Okay. So. Uh, hmm. How long is this going to take? Let's just assume it actually, it really kind of doesn't say how long this is going to take. Because, because the cinderlings are, are fairly slow. What is their movement rate? I, there's... I know that they're listed in here. Where, Cinderling, what is their movement? Actually, these little guys are surprisingly quick. Oh, but they do not like the cold. Oh, no wonder. Their speed is 30 feet. You know what? Then let's try and get this done as quickly as possible. Their, their speed is 30 feet. You know, this is silly. I'm actually... I'm kind of looking at my character sheet because I can't quite remember. I can't quite, I can't quite remember what walking speed for an elf is. And I've been playing D and D for years. Thirty feet. Okay. Um, I will actually, I will get off my horse and I will carry some of the soot sprites around in my backpack um, and let some of them just ride on top of my horse. And I will lead my horse because I think it'll be easier. I think it'll be easier to just move along um we're actually we're following a forest path so it's not it's not that bad um okay let's see for every half hour the party is traveling i need to make a wisdom perception check to notice that some sprites have wandered off okay oh that's not a problem one has, one has noticed that a, a chipmunk has darted and is trying to ch chase the chipmunk up a tree. And no, you can't do that, little cinderling. Come back here. I notice a straggler. I pick them up. I put them back with the others. Ah, oh, an hour passes. Let's see if I notice another straggler. Ah, uh, crit. Yeah, I noticed. Oh, one of the cinderlings has noticed a shiny little pebble along the trail and they want to keep it but it's far too heavy and they're just sort of staggering behind and i'm like no little cinderling you have to stay with the group we don't need you falling behind they really they don't like to be contained in any way shape or form they just they just kind of want to keep wandering off <sighs> No, we have to stay on the trail. Oh dear, I seem to have lost one. <laughs> I, he goes beyond my notice. They go beyond my notice. I'm not sure they have any sort. I'm not sure they have any sort of, of gender whatsoever. They, 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 they. One wanders off and they are lost to my eyes. I did not see them. Okay, well, unfortunately, one has gotten lost. Uh, there are well, there are forty of them. I can't just 
count them every single time. 16. Oh, another one has wandered off with a bit of bread that I, from my backpack. Ah, stop trying to eat all of my food, you little, 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 little buggers. Stay put. Hearing a bit of a stream up ahead. Ah, let's see. Oh. Oh, it's actually worse than a stream. It's, it's a bit of a river. And they start to freak out a little bit. Cal calm down, calm down, calm down, little cinderlings. It's, it's fine. It's, it's fine. We'll find a, we'll find a place to cross the river. We will, I swear. There will probably, there, there has to be some sort of forge or, or a, or a bridge somewhere. So let's, Let's see if we can find a bridge or, um, or, or some sort of fjord of some type. <clears throat> okay. Uh, ah, 80 feet downstream, there is in fact a bridge. Oh, excellent. Come little cinderlings, let us cross this bridge. And as we get about halfway across... Suddenly, a young troll swings out from underneath and climbs onto it and, and demands payment. There is a toll to cross the troll's bridge. <laughs> oh, no. It's trolls, bridges. This is, this, this is a thing that has happened before. Um, no. No, not with a, not, not rolling hi a history check again with a one that I, I have, n I've, trolls, bridges, I have never encountered this concept before, let alone such a thing. I, I quickly pull out my short swords just in case the troll attempts to attack. I, I do have a bunch of charges to protect, so, you know. Sir Kujuru is, is off to the side and he's growling and snarling at the troll. All right, then. Um, uh, a, a toll. Uh, all right. Um, how much is the toll? 25 gold pieces. Um, <clears throat> well, a, that seems a bit steep. 25 gold pieces? Uh, out of curiosity, what would you do if I didn't pay? Uh, well, you could... You could answer a riddle. A riddle? A riddle. Mm. Um. Well, alright. Um curiosity what what would be the riddle what is that which in the morning goes upon four feet upon two feet in the afternoon and then upon three in the evening i actually right now i actually kind of wish we it had riddle as a skill in D, &D as opposed to uh the lord of the rings but let's find out oh that yeah i i, I rolled another ampersand of a 20 Okay. Yes, I have definitely heard this riddle before. <laughs> I just, I just kind of look at him and smile and say, well, a human, of course. Oh, um, uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, well, all right. You may pass. You're, that's it. You're just going to let us pass. Well, yeah, that's the deal. Oh, um, well, thank you. Um, well, that's really quite kind. Uh, you know what? Do you, do you, do you, do you want a toll? I, I, t 25 gold pieces is a little steep for, for a toll. Um, would you take some silver? I, you know, I, I give the troll some silver because <laughs> I, I'll, 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 I'll hand over some silver that I got in the previous adventure. Uh, I'll just 
reach in, grab a handful and give it to them. <laughs> that's, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. It's, I, I feel kind of bad that it was, I, I, it was, it really was a simple riddle. I, one that everyone has heard before. Um, you know, so it's one of the classic riddles. So I just, I feel kind of bad. And we cross the bridge. Okay. Uh, let's see. When the Sunderlings make it across the river, they do a little victory dance. Yay! We crossed the river! Okay. Okay, so we've crossed the river, and the forest apparently um, opens up a bit um, to, to, to some more open areas. Shrubbery, some grass, some wild grasses and flowers, or at least what would be wild and grasses and flowers uh, during the spring and summer, but uh, most of them have all died off at this point. And moving about is fairly easy. We have some potential for an encounter here. Let's see what kind of encounter we have. Apparently, the the smell of the cinderlings having a bit of a a bit of a smoky scent that I can't entirely detect, but apparently other animals can. A wild boar has has smelled the cinderlings and thinks that they will make a hearty meal. And suddenly a boar kind of charges into the area. Oh boy. I think, I think it is initiative time. Oh, that is fantastic. I rolled, I rolled double ones on initiative for both the boar and myself. That, that's just fantastic. I get a plus four to initiative. Um, I'm just going to cast speak with animal again. I'm just going to use another spell slot and just cast speak with animal. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop, 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 stop. Friend boar, do not, do not attack these cinderlings. <laughs> do not attack me or my, or my little cinderlings. They are not, they are not food. Here, here, take some, take some food. As I reach down my backpack and find that the cinderlings have taken bites here and there out of, out of out of some food it's like well the cinderlings have already eaten more of my bread so here here have some bread have some have some dried apples and and some and some dried grapes and such and i and i sort of toss the food off to the side and the boar happily goes after it because apparently that's really what he wants uh Strong, strong, disgusting sense will make the boar lose interest or distracted by offering some actual food. Okay, let's hurry along. While, while the boar is distracted, let's move. Move, 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 move. Let's get the cinderlings moving. And let's see. Let's see if I lose any more cinderlings. Oh, nope, not this time. I have managed to get, nope. This, this boar has definitely made me go, okay, I'm keeping a close eye on all of you. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's get out of this open area and back into the woods where where we can where we can easily get away from another boar or the same boar if he decides to track us down again because a great way to get away from wild pigs is to climb trees and I definitely would like to go back where there are trees. Okay, we have gone past the open area and back into the trees and quickly discover that we have walked into what looks like an overgrown old village. Probably an elven village that was long since abandoned. 12, oh, I barely made it. Just out of the corner of my eye, I, I see that a tiny little group of cinderlings falls into what looks like the ruins of what was once a house. And a bunch of the other cinderlings just kind of start freaking out that that four of their compatriots are suddenly gone. They have vanished into a hole. I, I immediately go to check it out. And it looks like maybe the, the remnants of a cellar or something. 
Uh, all right, well, I, I can attempt to climb down and, oh dear. Okay, hmm. I attempt to squeeze through the hole, but bits of debris start to fall in. Um, and it doesn't really look like it's going to be able to hold my weight. I could maybe, I, I could maybe misty step in there and, and get them out. Um, hmm. I can really, I only know that I can only do that once a day though. I can actually cast it as a spell, as a second level spell, but I've only got one spell slot. Hmm, what, oh what, oh what, oh what do I do? No, I know what I can do. I can take my rope, I can secure it around a tree, and I can let that take most of my weight, and I can climb down to get the cinderlings. That way I don't have to actually put any weight or strain on any of the floor above. Yep. All right. Let's do that. That is precisely what I do. I will tie a rope around a tree and I will actually use it to climb to bear my weight and climb down into the hole. That way there's no strain actually put on what remains of the building. And I can, and the, the cinder links can just kind of grab a hold of me um, or hang out in my pockets and, and can climb back out. That is what I will do. Let's see. When the adventurer rescues the four cinderlings there is much rejoicing cinder the cinderlings hug themselves and then hug me oh that's so cute okay so let's continue onward uh let's see as the journey progresses the weather turns from sunny to overcast oh dear heavy clouds start to gather on the horizon oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy and they, they do not, they do not like weather at all. Even though it, it says, it says here that it's, it's rain will begin to fall, but it's too cold. It's a little too cold for rain. Oh, let's see. Mm, and it, oh, okay, so it's going to start snowing. And it looks like it's going to start snowing for quite some time. Let's try and find these little cinderlings some shelter for a bit. I find some shelter in a bit of an outcropping um, that we can actually all hang out in for a little bit as it as it snows because um, we don't want these little soot sprites to dissolve do we it rains for a bit how long does it rain for well it snows for a bit it doesn't actually rain um, let's see when the snow stops we can continue onward and let's see, a magical encounter, ooh. It's, this is, this is kind of, this is not necessarily part of the story, but I'm gonna add it anyway. There is a random encounter here for a magical encounter. Let's see what we get. D6, cause there are six potential encounters, okay. As we continue on our journey closer to where the abandoned mansion is supposed to be, a large shadow passes overhead. When you quickly look up, you catch a glimpse of something gray and furry just passing overhead. Okay. Could be a flying squirrel. Could be a squirrel in general. Squirrels are like that. It might not have also been furry either. I mean, it in, in, in quickly passing, it could have been something feathered. It, it could have been a bird of some sort. It could have been, could have been a flying creature of some type. I, it, I, I wasn't able to catch what it was, but it doesn't seem to be providing any issue. So I'm going to ignore it and continue going along my way. Okay. I head through the trees. Ruins of a once magnificent mansion can be seen. When built, it had two floors, but since then, most of the roof has collapsed. 
However, much of the building is still standing and you will be able to, and will probably be able to resist the weather and ravages of time for years to come. It's a great little home for the cinderlings. Okay, let's scout this out and make sure there isn't any more surprises. Hmm. Okay. There are nine doors. There are nine doors to the inside of this thing. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Let's, we have a map here. Let's just choose one randomly. Where's my D10? And just ignore 10. I said ignore 10. Seven. All right, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. This is actually, it's the door into area one. Well, that's convenient. Okay. Uh, the door is a bit swollen, but it's from, but it's also, but the doorway is also partially rotted. So it's not really, it's not really particularly hard to just pop open the door and, and, and get in. This room used to be a large opulent living room. The floor is parquet and is warped with, with dampness. Vines have grown inside through some of the broken windows. The smell of damp is pervasive and comes from moldy heaps of collapsed furniture. There are two doors along the north wall and one in the west wall. And then there's the door that we came in on the south. Let's see if there's anything lurking in here. Nope. Doesn't seem to be. All right, let's, uh, well, there's an open doorway right off to the west. So let's just go through that open doorway. This room was once a library. Now, however, not, not much is left. Cabinets have reached the ceiling and they have partially collapsed, leaning against each other. Leather sofas have piles of mushrooms growing out of them. Of most, of most books, nothing is left but scraps and dust. There are doors in the east, west, north wall. The door in the south leads outside. Okay, let's start poking about and see what we can find. There's a, bit, there's a collapsed table. Let's see. Is there anything underneath it? I'm not really seeing much of anything. Well, let's check out the books. I am a, I am a learned individual. And this is a very, very old place. So let's, let's see if I can actually find any books worth salvaging. Ooh, I actually uncover a bit of a pile, like buried. Ooh, seven books. I managed to find seven books that are worth saving. Excellent. First doorway leads to a solarium. Uh, plants have taken over most of this room. Roots have burrowed into the floor and leafy stems hold up whatever is left of the roof. Shards of glass poke out here and there. It's a shame. It's a shame I don't, I'm not a healer. Otherwise I would, I would definitely score, I would definitely score some plants, but no. Let's move on to the back of this room. Let's check out this smaller room here. Uh, storeroom. The storeroom remains mostly intact. Rats one, racks once contained dry goods, most of which have just crumbled. There are two doors, uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's see. There are some candles, a few blocks of incense that have little bite marks taken out of them because mice. Let's see. Some lanterns on a top shelf. I, I really have no need for any new lanterns. An hourglass lies in a corner. Oh, I am taking the hourglass. I'm definitely taking the hourglass. Yep. All right. Let's move on to the next area. Uh, area five. Okay. Da, 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 da. Dining hall. This room was a large dining hall, which is in remarkably good shape. The air is dry and smells faintly of smoke. Two long tables have collapsed in the center and upholstered chairs have been reduced to kindling. Both tables and chairs show scorch marks. A large fireplace stands against the north wall. There are two doors in the south wall, three doors in the west, two interior, one exterior. Mm. 
East wall holds one door and a hallway leading to another doorway outside. The Cinderlings become now become ridiculously excited. They they're like, "Yay! We have, we think we have found our home." Okay, when the Cinderlings enter the room, they start enthusiastically squeaking and pointing to the fireplace. Okay, well, go at it. Let's see. When the Cinderlings come within 10 feet of the fireplace, a flame suddenly roars to life in the center. The flame quickly splits into multiple smaller flames. Three perpetual flames react to the presence of the cinderlings. The owner of the house practiced fire magic long ago, making their own ever-burning fireplace. Okay, well, apparently these creatures are going to attack the cinderlings. And I cannot have that. They are charges under my control. Okay, so it is definitely going to be initiative time. Oh, okay. I got, oh, what do I got? A 17 for initiative. And these creatures, okay, these creatures got uh, a 19. They are actually going to go before me. So let's see. Um, hmm. They're going to attempt to attack a cinderling. So the cinderlings actually went and rushed them. All right, cinderlings, what kind of armor class do you have? Okay. It is going to, each one of these is going to attack a cinderling. Oh, yeah. There goes one cinderling absorbed by a magical flame. There's another cinderling ab ab absorbed by magical flame. And a third one got missed. Well, okay, that's, we can't, we can't have, we can't actually let these little guys get eaten here. Um, all right, pulling my short swords and I, um, just immediately enchanting them. Uh, dreadful strike is what it's called. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to outright just attack one of them. Both of my attacks. What is their armor class? Twelve. Oh, that's two hits. Okay, so... Short sword, short sword... Seven. This creature has 22 points of damage, and I have just taken one of them out. Okay. Uh, Sir Kojuru is now going to leap at one of them. Luar is attacking them, so so will Sir Kojuru. We'll snap and take, try and take a bite out of whatever this is. Um, 15. Oh, a 15 is definitely going definitely going to do some damage. Let's see what we got here. Oh, four plus ba, 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 two. Four plus two. Six points of damage. Sir Kojuru hit one. Unfortunately, the, the creature that I struck uh, uh, explodes in a cloud of smoke. Okay, next round. All right, well, one of the creatures kind of exploded in a big round ball. Um, I, well, one of us, one will attack me, I suppose, and then the other one will attack Sir Kojuro. Let's see, Try attempts to claw me and fails badly with a four uh hoo -hoo. It actually has it has a worse strength than i thought and will attempt to and the other one will attempt to attack my dog and and actually he has he has a really good armor class right now because he's wearing barding 
16. Oh, a 15 is definitely not going to do it. Okay. Ah, uh, well, let's see. Um, hmm. Let's let me take a look. Uh, Driftful Strike bonus action to imbue the weapon of, until the end of the turn. Uh, until the end of the turn, the weapons are magical and they deal one, an extra d6 psychic damage on a hit. A creature can take this extra damage only once. A, a, a single creature. Okay, so I destroyed the one, so I, it's still it's still active, and I can still attack this one using the same using the same dreadful strike. Okay, well let's try it again. Um, what is their armor class again? A twelve. Um, 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 um five plus six. Oh, barely missed. Oh, that's unfortunate. That that is really unfortunate. Oh well. Once one hit it. One hit it. Uh so let's roll some damage. Two plus four six plus psychic damage. Six twelve. Twelve total. Oh. It is down it's down a little bit more than half. And Sir Kojuru is going to attack his other one. Now oh, that is a cocked die. 18 is definitely going to hit. Uh, another four points of damage. It is, it is almost down by half. All right, well, next round. Next round, and they attempt to attack again. And they crit on me. Ah, uh, nut. Okay. Um, 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 what is their max damage? Max damage. Where? Well, oh, there it is. Uh, D4 plus two. So six. Six points of damage. Ooh, it managed to... Hit me with some fiery claws. Ow. Uh, my max hit points is 24. Okay. Can keep an eye on that. That hurt. All right. And it also burned my tunic right across my arm. Uh, oh, Sir Kojuro got missed, although barely. A a wooden scorch mark as has appeared on his on his on his uh on his breastplate. Alright. Let's attempt this again. See if I can take this creature down. The five was once again barely going to miss. However, the other one hit. Alright. Oh, well, no psychic damage this time, so. Two plus, what is it again? Four, six, six total. Oh, whittling it down little by little. Okay, so Sir Kojuru, what kind of damage can you do if you can actually take a bite out of him? Um, hmm. Your what's your attack roll? Attack. Nope, nope, that's my turtle. I'm, I'm looking at my turtle stats for some bizarre reason. Okay, bite, plus four to hit. Yes! Yes, he hit. Okay. Uh, three. Three points of damage. All right. Next round, they attempt to attack again. All right, let's see what kind of damage you can do. Uh, four. Four points of damage. Okay. Ooh. Well, let's see if I can take this down. Come on. Oh, that five. That five likes to roll. What the heck? That is a crit. That will deal max damage. Um, ten. Ten points of damage. It is enough to take it down. 
And another one sort of explodes in a ball of smoke. Okay. I am going to use my last spell slot. I am going to cast Speak of the Animal again. Um, I'm going to command Sir Kojuru to get back. I didn't entirely want to use my last spell slot, but it, the, the entire fireplace is now just kind of like a big ball of smoke right now. Um, everybody get back. Get back away from the fireplace. Everybody get back. Um, so it's bright to stay back. You basically move to kind of the other end of the table just to kind of see what, what, what happens. What, what, because the, there's a third one there. Just, I can't see it at the moment in the smoke. Um, let's see what, let's see what it does. And it can't actually leave the fireplace. I didn't even think that these things couldn't just leave the fireplace, but it doesn't, it seems to kind of be stuck there. So I'm, uh, I'm going to fire some arrows at it. Well, that two doesn't do anything. That 13, however, is going to. Um, this one's already wounded by Sir Kojuru. Uh, seven points of damage. It is going to attack this time by breathing fire on us. Okay. Uh, creature in the area must succeed a DC 10 dex saving throw. All right. All right, let's try this. 15. That is not a problem because with my dex bonus of plus four, we'll make that a 19. I managed to roll out of the way of the smoke and fire. Let's fire a couple of more arrows at this thing and try to take it down. Uh, well, okay. The fine, it, at least it's a six, a six and an eight. So that... Let's see. Let's see. 10 points of damage plus blah, blah. Yeah, that's gonna, yep. That is gonna be enough to take it down. Okay, the fire creatures are no more. Soot sprites can now claim their home. Let's see, once the last uh, flame has been defeated. The cinderlings emerge from the nooks and crannies that they manage to squeeze in them themselves into to hide. They squeak and dance around overjoyed. Um, after celebrating, the cinderlings move into the fireplace and start examining every square inch of it. Okay. Well, once that happens, I will, I will start poking about again as the cinderlings start checking out their new home. Um, let's see. The area area behind the dining room is def is obviously going to be a kitchen. Do 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 do. Yeah. There's really not much in here of of note. I don't really need any kitchen implements, so I go back, I leave the kitchen and go back into the dining room and find that the cinderlings have all sort of gathered and they all decide and they actually hold up a little cloth bag and they offer it to me as a reward. See, the bop is going to try to explain to me what is inside the bag. Let's see if I can actually comprehend what he's saying this time. No, I, they're magical, but maybe I'm not entirely sure. I, whatever's inside, I, I thank the little, I thank the little cinderlings and, and, uh, well, that's basically it. Well, the, the cinderlings are happy that I have helped them out. I have, I have helped my little, my little soot sprite charges. Uh, to find a new home. Actually, they're tiny elementals. I thought that they were they were tiny fake creatures. They are not, in fact, 
They are they are little tiny elementals. Well, that sort of that makes a certain amount of sense, really. They're they're soot sprites. They're they're kind of they're kind of like in between sort of earth and fire elementals, I suppose. You know what? I I will actually hang out with the cinderlings for the night since this area is fairly warm and dry. She'll sort of camp out uh, with the cinderlings for the night, share my food again, and then leave them in the morning to their new home. And thus concludes that adventure. That was that was a rather nice adventure. Um, this adventure is inspired by my neighbor Totoro and Spirited Away. The, the little can, there are little candies inside the bag. It doesn't really say how many candy. Oh, there are 50 pieces of candy inside the bag. Oh boy. <laughs> hmm. I don't, I, they kind of smell like they're star, the magic candy are star shaped and taste like sugar and anise. Okay. There are 50 pieces inside of the bag. Okay. So I will, I will leave the magic candy for now. Um, have a nice long rest. Gain back my spells. I will cast some cure wounds and get rid of, and get rid of some of the damage that was dealt by these fire creatures. Bid the, bid the soot sprites adieu. Enjoy your new home, and I will go back along, go back on the trail. I, I enjoyed this adventure um, probably about as much as the adventure that I, I actually got my animal companions on. This was nice. This was really nice. You, there, the, you, can, you can avoid attacking the troll. You can avoid actually attacking any animals. This was kind of nice. So I don't, not entirely sure sure how much XP I'm going to get out of it. Um, probably not a whole lot since I didn't have, since I didn't have, um, a huge amount of challenge of two. The young troll was a challenge of two. And this was also probably, um, this is probably my longest actual cast here at just over an hour. Um, so yeah, that was actually kind of nice. It um, the one one of the things that I really really like about the adventures in Eyes Unclouded is that they don't a lot of them really don't seem to have a whole lot of combat, which is is something I actually truly enjoy. I I enjoy using more of my skills um, to actually do things as opposed to just outright fighting everything. Um, that's kind of an an old school way of, of playing D and I, I like using, um, my wits and intelligence and, and persuasion to sort of get through things, um, as opposed to just kind of fighting everything, um, which is kind of important also as a, as a solo adventure, uh, just kind of going through there. Are, there are some notes also on, on playing with younger players, um, so that, you know, if you don't, you don't really have to actually go through the motions of like necessarily fighting things and, and causing harm to animals. And there are, there are notes on how to, on, on, on ideas and tips on how to, on how to deal with things, um, that, that younger players may not necessarily think to do. Um, but yes. This was, this was nice. I, I truly enjoyed, I truly enjoyed this, this little adventure. So, uh, let's, let's see what awaits Luar next time. Thanks for listening.